sit in your chair and then try to lean forward and forward and forward and forward and then try to pull on something rapidly. Again, do it with me. Lean forward, 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 forward. Lean a bit onto something because you gotta consider you have oar handles. So actually try to bring something a bit deeper into the boat or lean on something and push forward. And then as quickly as you can, turn around and pull. You see, it takes a lot of time in comparison to how much time you have at the catch. Why? It's the way we prepare the muscles. It's that simple. Today I'm talking about Tim Roth. Tim is from Switzerland, quite a successful junior rower last year in Japan and Tokyo. He made a bronze medal in the men's single skull and the year before he was in the B final in the Swiss junior quad. Now the video, actually a few videos I received from him are from the final preparation before he went to Japan and he asked me for some feedback. I know it's quite a while ago, but it was locked down. Now everybody's getting back on the water. I'm going to use the opportunity to talk about one of the best junior rowers in the world. Tim, if I look at your rowing, it looks really good. There is not much um, you should change except for two things. And the first thing is here at the catch. And this is where the problem starts. You can see this here on the way forward to the catch, the angle of your trunk. So hip to shoulder, this is the line I'm drawing. And in relation to the boat or water surface is actually changing, which means you're leaning more and more and more forward the further you come to the catch especially now this is the part where it changes the most and you may ask okay why not i mean what's the big deal the problem is not the leaning forward the problem is what happens to the body weight when you come to the catch and i've talked about this in numerous other videos but this is where you can see it very well it just try it out right now if you sit somewhere and you're not driving sit in your chair and then try to lean forward and forward and forward and forward and then try to pull on something rapidly again do it with me Lean forward, 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 forward. Lean a bit onto something because you gotta consider you have oar handles. So actually try to bring something a bit deeper into the boat or lean on something and push forward. And then as quickly as you can, turn around and pull. You see, it takes a lot of time in comparison to how much time you have at the catch. Why? It's the way we prepare the muscles. It's that simple. Let's take a different shot so I can explain better what I mean. If you move forward, in the boat and a lot of your body weight is not supported by your seat but you're actually using your oar handles to have a bit of your body weight to rest on your oar handles what happens is that you are pretty susceptible to waves now this is picture perfect conditions in switzerland all right but this is not always the case there is some footage of tim which i'm going to show you later on where he rows some um, square blades and he does have problems And the reason why he's got problems is because most of his stability rests on his hands usually at this stage of the recovery. The ultimate goal is not to do this. One easy solution, I keep on hammering this in my videos, is when you move forward, make sure you do as much of the forward leaning before your knees start to bend. Why? Because this way you have it all done and you stabilize your weight with tension in the chest bone, in the lower spine and the idea is remember the video um, with with Alex on a by rower how loose his elbows were if you try to move forward with stiff hands your upper body will not be flexible enough but it needs to be also your shoulders won't be flexible enough so make sure your shoulders are loose and the elbow actually drops quite a bit you now see a bit of a height difference between Alex hand and Alex elbow and this way you want to make sure your shoulders are loose and relaxed and then instead of just going with the hand forward I try to bring the elbow forward, so the entire forearm forward. And this way I don't just pull the shoulder, I actually pull the lat. Exactly, and just like you saw it now, this is what I would like to do. So 
loose elbows on the way forward because this way you can guarantee there's not a lot of weight in your hands. Try it out. Sit in your chair, move forward this way. You see? Easy. And now start to pull. Whoa. Ready. Because there's no weight on your hands. There's no weight forward. It's all in your seat. And this is exactly where we need to be. Now, why is, why is this a problem? Why can't the weight be on the oar handles? Well, reason number one, if your weight is on the oar handle, it's going to be very difficult to get the blades off the water. A lot of coaches keep yelling at athletes, get your blades off the water. How is this supposed to happen? If all of your stability rests on your hands and you bring your blades off the water, which is always a stabilizing factor, then you are less stable. Naturally, the body doesn't want to do that. So, of course, the blades will come back to the water. The only solution is to make sure you sit on your seat and have light hands. Just, I just explained how to do it. And make sure you are pretty you know, easy on your hands, on your shoulders and arms. And then you can play. You can push down, go up. You have control over your blades. So, you have to attain body control before you can attain leg control. Now, the second problem. Why? You want to have light hands and have a quick turnaround here at the catch is the following one you need to go from now in this in this negative example you need to go from pushing forward sliding forward to pulling and this takes time more time than you have and the time you have is determined by the speed of your seat interestingly or actually the boat it is here at the catch where the problem is obvious See what the seat does. Moving forward, a pause. The body doesn't move. The boat is not under control right now. Let me go back, show you again what I mean. I mean, this is, this is one of the best junior rowers in the world. Forward. You see his body is still moving forward. He's accelerating mass vertically down and forward. Whoop has to break the mass has to tell all his muscles and all the muscle chains stop pushing start preparing for pulling it takes time Zip. and this is exactly the time it takes this is it now i'm not sure if tim had if, if he had gotten this part right as well besides all the other things he does very well actually i don't know if this would have been a silver medal or gold medal possibly possibly because this is where he lost a lot of speed a lot of speed he does compensate extremely well you got to give him credit for this. But here, there's, there's a complete loss of control of the boat. He has to control his own body. And you can see that he wants to start moving because his blade should never stop. So his blade goes down. Now you see the upper body is rotating. Watch what the blade does. Actually, it should stop right there. Exactly there. Shouldn't go any deeper. And you can see the nice mark here in the shaft where my cursor is right now. Now, this forward motion, just before the catch, is lost exactly before the blade is in the water. You see, it's tiny. But do this 250 times in a race or 300 times in a race. It will cost a lot of energy and time. And here, you can see, it's not just the blade that goes into the water, it's the shaft. And it's, all, it's actually a third of the shaft that goes too deep. If he had Randall foils, it would prevent him from doing this and the blade would teach his body how high the hands should go. Now the problem is here at the catch. As he was leaning onto his handles, he lost time. And the second problem is at the catch, he starts to have an upward rotation with the entire trunk from this angle to this angle before the blade is even doing something. Exactly. Now is a time where he has to interrupt the flow of forces. Otherwise, he cannot stabilize the back. And the idea every rower has is that you want to keep exactly the same angle you have at the catch until the leg drive is almost done. And Tim manages to do this. But the only way to do this, and I haven't seen your force curves, Tim, but I'm pretty sure there's a little, after the initial peak, there's a little dent and then it picks up again. This is usually the force curves we see. And you have a beautiful leg drive. And then Tim opens up. And this is something I can only recommend you watch very, very, very closely. Because this is about as perfect as, as you can do it. So this part of the drive is absolutely excellent. It's very, very good. And he also doesn't wash out. Why? 
because instead of continuing the rotating motion of the upper body pivot, what Tim does is here at the catch, or right after the catch, just before the blades connect. See, bend the oars, bend the oars, I'm playing backwards now. Bend the oars, this is the drive phase, effective drive phase. Right here, loss of control starts to connect. And he carefully now has to apply force hold and he needs a lot of power here in his arms and triceps to hold this. And this wouldn't be necessary. If Tim went forward at, to the catch and had just to do this here, the upper body could stay in place. Maybe he wouldn't have to lean that much forward. By this I mean that part right there. And the blades wouldn't go so deep because look at this. The blades go deep, 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 deep. Leg drive starts deep, 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 deep. And now they come back to the surface at the point of time where he has actually maximum perpendicular force. And I'm pretty sure if the blades wouldn't have that vertical travel, because just, just check the white mark. See, the white mark has just come back again. See where my cursor is? Let me draw an arrow so you can see it. This is exactly the mark I mean. They wouldn't be losing a lot of horizontal force. And this is also why you can see the boat traveling quite a bit vertically because the body is working vertically quite a lot. Now let's let's watch the full build up again. The, the acceleration is beautiful. But you see a little stop of the of, of the bow at the catch. And the faster the rate will be, the, the choppier the catch will be. Just watch the bow. So, exactly. Building up. Building up. Accelerating. Beautiful. You can see this, the faster it goes, the more the bow starts to stop. Why? Because this part here at the catch still takes about the same time. The, the muscles can't work quicker. Basically what, what happens in your muscle is it's just tiny, tiny, tiny um, electric signals. These signals need to be interpreted and they need to lead to the right function of the muscle. If this already takes time during steady state, it will certainly not take less time during high intensity or faster base pace. So the problem here is this is a factor that cannot be accelerated because there's too much load at the catch. You have to prepare your muscles for pulling on the way forward to the catch. Now, now, this is where you need to prepare these for pulling. Zip. That's, that's all there is to say. And there is one more thing that got me interested and you can usually see an inefficient catch at the finish. It sounds weird, but this is exactly what's happening. And it usually happens right there. It's a lack of connection at the finish. You can see that the body is still moving, although the blade is not connected. And Tim is extremely well trained when it comes to technique. Because he singled out this factor and try to get rid of that symptom. But you can still see the last part of the finish is not accelerating the boat as much as it could. You just accelerate, where's that finally accelerate? It isn't happening because the blade is traveling too much vertically. It's not a real washout because the symptom has been cured by itself, but the cause is still there. Therefore, there is no full force connection, um, horizontally speaking. This is um, after he rode with, um, I think, a, a rubber rubber cord around the boat, so it's a weight training. But still, the, the handwriting is usually the same. All right, very interesting for me. I hope it was interesting for you as well. You can see even the best in the world do have their problems, but by absolutely no means, it, it means that this is not good. But there is always a higher standard you can look for, and these problems are very common amongst many rowers. All right. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Share the video if you think it's interesting. And give me a thumbs up. Just lets me appreciate that you appreciate the work I do. All right, guys. Visit the Patreon page. And if you want to send me your video for analysis, 
there is a free and a paid option. The free option is with permission to use it on social media. So the entire arm training community benefits. All right, guys, I wish you a very good day and I'm looking forward to see you all soon. Bye bye.